Good afternoon, everybody. Um, okay. Um, what we'll do there, um, don't worry about the uh, the link to ask questions. Um, if you want to just pop the questions into uh, the chat. So um, you'll see at the top right hand side, um, you should have a, a chat option. Um, if you hit that and uh, pop any questions that you've got in there, and we'll pick them up from there. Um, just before we make a start, though, um, a few interrupt uh, interruptions, introduction, should I say. Um, so my name's Boyd. Um, I am a senior product owner for Sparks. Uh, and my role at Sparks is to work with uh, our customers and colleagues internally to understand what it is that our products need to do um, and to work with colleagues across the organization to make that happen. Um, and my primary focus is on uh, Sparks Maths Virtual Classroom, which is what we're here to talk about today, and also uh, another product of ours, um, Sparks Maths, which we may touch on uh, a little later on. Here with me today uh, is Kerry. Um, if you want to give everyone a wave, Kerry. <laughs> uh, and in fact, uh, if you want to introduce yourself, Kerry, that'd be great. Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. And Kerry, and that's typical. I open my window because it's really warm in my loft and my neighbours started cutting his grass. I hope you can hear me all right. But I basically work in business development. So I speak to schools and go out to schools and introduce our products to them, um, mostly in the north of England, as you could probably tell by my accent. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. So just to echo what uh, Kerry says there, we, we really appreciate you taking your time this afternoon to join us. Um, the intention for this session is basically to answer any questions that you guys have uh, about Virtual Classroom and how you can make the most of it. Um, so as many questions as you've got for us, uh, the better in the chat. Um, before we do make a start with that, just a, a few housekeeping bits and pieces. Um, I just need to make you aware that this session is going to be recorded. Um, so if you're not happy to be recorded, please uh, switch off any video or audio uh, and then you can just ask your questions uh, in the chat. Um, after the session's finished, we'll send you uh, a copy of the recording by email. But we'd also encourage you, if you're not already a member, to join um, the Sparks Community Facebook group. Uh, so if you search for at Sparks Maths Community, um, the, the community is a really useful resource, um, not just to find out the latest information from Sparks, but also to talk to other Sparks users, share best practice. Uh, we produce a number of resources uh, that we share to support your, uh, your teaching and learning as well. So definitely worth uh, popping along and joining the community there. Um, we just ask that if you're um, not asking a question that you uh, keep your microphone muted. Um, I did hear some beautiful singing at the beginning of the session there, um, and as beautiful as it was, um, <laughs> uh, we yeah we just uh, if we could keep the microphones uh, off that would be brilliant. Um, uh, to the questioning piece, uh, as I say, pop them in the chat um, and we'll take them from there. And by all means, if you do want to uh, uh, talk to us about your question when we get round to your question, feel free to un unmute your mic and give us any more context you want to there. Um, and once the session's over, if you've got any feedback on how it ran, how useful it was or whatnot, then please do let us know. Uh, any feedback's really useful. Um, just uh, before we dive into the questions, um, uh, as uh, I've said previously uh, through these webinars, um, a very big thank you uh, to, to all of you for, for doing what you're doing in supporting your learners. Um, uh, massive kudos to you for, uh, from everybody at Sparks. Um, we, we hope that, if I'm allowed to call it the new norm, we hope everybody's settling into the new norm now. Uh, and we hope that um, Sparks Virtual Classroom uh, is proving useful uh, in supporting you in delivering your teaching and learning. Um, to any uh, new faces that have joined us since we had our last webinar, um, a massive hello. Uh, it's fantastic to have you joining us. Um, we'd like to share that we've now got over 530 schools using Virtual Classroom across 79 countries. So it's been brilliant to see uh, the Sparks community uh, becoming truly global. Um, uh, I think what we'll do now then is um, throw over to uh, questions and answers. Um, just to give everybody time to get their questions in, um, one thing I'd like to run through because um, it's been a, a commonly occurring um, trend we've seen in, in support requests is to talk a little about the, uh, the login process um, around virtual classroom. Um, so we've had a number of uh, um, support requests lately uh, relating to 
teachers being unable to find where they need to log into virtual classroom and what they need to do about it. So just to clarify, um, first of all, um, when you visit sparks.co.uk, um, until a couple of days ago, you'll see a, a login link in the top right hand corner of the screen. Um, and this would have previously led you to the login pages for um, Sparks Maths that I referred to earlier on. That's not virtual classroom and you wouldn't have been able to find your school if you went down that route. Um, because virtual classroom is effectively a, a separate product to Sparks Maths, um, we send you uh, a unique login URL um, for your school. And it's actually only the first person that signs up for the Sparks account that gets that. So if you were the one that signed up for um, Virtual Classroom for your school, you will have received a welcome email and that will contain the unique teacher login link for your school. Um, we would ask you to share that with your colleagues um, because they won't receive that uh, link uh, through any other mechanism. When you create accounts for them um, within Virtual Classroom, they will receive a, a welcome email, but all that does is ask them to set a password and it doesn't give them the URL for, uh, the login URL for your school and it doesn't request that they bookmark it. So that's probably the best bet just for the, for the immediate time being. If you make sure that all of your colleagues have got that link that we sent to you and ask them to bookmark it, that should hopefully avoid any um, troubles there. But what I would say is um, we're aware that obviously this has been causing uh, a bit of friction um, and we are looking at um, uh, making this a bit simpler over the, the coming weeks. So hopefully we'll have a, a, a more robust solution for you in a few weeks time. So all of that said, um, we will throw over to questions. I'm just going to quickly open the chat. Um, da -da -da. Oh, some more compliments for the singing. It's nice to know I'm not the only one that appreciated it. OK, so the first question, uh, I'm using Sparks Virtual Classroom. I'm having a problem with some pupils' progress being saved, even when they don't log in. Is there something that I could do to prevent that? Um, so some pupils' progress being saved when they don't log in. To, uh, Nora, um, would you mind uh, d talking us through this one just uh, so I can get a bit more information about your question? Are you happy to? Yes, hello. Yeah. Perfect, hi there. Are you able hello. to describe for me in a bit more detail the, the, the issue you're seeing there? Yes, uh, when I did attend the first Sparks uh, uh, webinar, they suggested that uh, every pupil uses the same first and last name every single time. They yeah. log in and they do not click on log out. This would keep the record there. Now, I had a few moments where the, this pupil did not log out. And uh, after a while, it, it tells me logged out. Uh, for the first uh, few hours, I can see their progress. Maybe by the second uh, day, it's, it's empty. It says logged out, and I I did see their progress. I did see, for example, they finished the core or the extension part. Now the next day it says logged out, and it's empty. And if this pupil tries to uh, enter this lesson again, uh, I can see the duplication of the same first and last name three times in a row or four times in a row. While when I attended the webinar, it said if they use the same first and last name, they can proceed where they stopped. Okay, so so what will happen there then, Nura, is um, uh, when a when a student logs in uh, the first time, we open um, uh, sorry to use technical jargon, but we open a session for them, um, and that session will um, last for uh, either until they press the log out, log out button, as we've already discussed, um, or it will expire after a certain time period, um, and I believe that's 24 hours. So let's say they do their lesson over um, a couple of days. It will be the case that the student will be automatically logged out, and they would have to rejoin the lesson again. Um, and what they're probably doing there is um, they're, they're being automatically logged out, um, when they rejoin the lesson, they enter the same first name and last name. But as far as virtual classroom is concerned, um, it will treat them as a separate student in, in, in so much as you'll see separate rows for that student. Um, so um, when we said that um, you, you, won't, you won't see them multiple times, you, you will. Um, but uh, what, what you can do there if a student hits that um, situation is because you can see their previous um, progress, you could tell them, okay, I, I can see that you got as far as uh, the end of the core. Um, just uh, now that you're logged in, just make a start on the extension. So I appreciate that that 
that would require some input to teach. Um, but um, because we don't have permanent accounts in virtual classroom, and there is, for security reasons, a, a, a timeout period, you may see this situation with uh, students appearing multiple times in lesson monitoring. Um, what I would say there is, um, and, and we can talk about this in a bit more detail later on, um, we, the, the other product that I was referring to uh, earlier, Sparks Maths, um, with Sparks Maths, all students have um, permanent accounts. And so when a student logs into Sparks Maths, so they do actually have a login with Sparks Maths, um, any uh, kind of lesson progress is always attributed to that user. So you don't have this situation with potentially multiple instances of the, the student. I, I know it's, um, it's not a, a, a solve as such, but does that answer your question? Oh, yes, but I was confused because uh, well, the first time I attended the first starting the webinar or the video, I don't remember what, any, whether it was a video webinar, it mentioned that I would be able to see the progress. Now, this has happened for me today in, I think, less than an hour, not 24 hours. After an hour, uh, and I did uh, show my pupils on screen during a Zoom session, do not click on log out and leave this uh, open and come back to it later. Maybe less than an hour it was. Uh, uh, I can see the, his progress, but he cannot see the progress, and uh, uh, it's clearly wiped out on his end, uh, uh, other end. So okay. uh, that clears things out, yes. I was okay. just afraid I'm doing something incorrect. Um, no, it doesn't sound like you are. I think what we should do with this one, Nora, is if I um, take a note of your details and then we can have a look um, at your school's instance of virtual classroom and see if we can see if there's anything um, going awry there. Um, if you wouldn't mind um, just staying on the call with us um, once the session's ended and I can take a few more details from you, is that OK? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so the next question um, from Angus, is there a limit to the number of lessons that we can have running at any one time? The simple answer is no. You can run uh, an unlimited number of lessons. Um, in terms of other limits, though, um, whilst we're, uh, we're on that theme, um, we do put a cap uh, of 100 students per lesson um, for any join link that you generate. Um, so um, we do recommend that uh, class sizes are kept to uh, under uh, 100 students. But um, no, you can run as many lessons as you want, um, uh, containing um, up to 20 objectives, I think it is, and you can leave those lessons running for as long as you want. So the reason, the reason I asked that one is because um, I had a couple of students, it started off with just one student, um, and I've emailed uh, support as well but the student didn't turn up for a week so I've only just sent the email who couldn't log on to a class and I didn't know whether it's because I had so many running but it's the, the two things are unrelated then. Um, that should be the case. Um, do you mind me asking uh, which school you're from Angus? Ullapool High School. Ullapool, okay. I, say, I know it's been in the system and last time I was on uh, was it yourself Kerry that mentioned it at the end I can't remember yeah right um, and also going back to um, was it uh, I can't remember the lady's name, sorry, previously. I've been getting my students just to stick. If I know it's going to be a lesson that's sort of two or three lessons long, the next time they go in, I'm just again, number two, and then again, just to separate it out a little bit. I don't know. But I, I presume then I'm eating into my 100 students onto the class. If I'm, say, if I've got 30 in the class and I think it's going to be four lessons worth of material, they'll all go on and then they'll all go on second time so that'll be up to 60 and then they'll all go on third time and that'll be up to 90 but I mean it, it'd be unusual for me to do that and I could maybe just split the objectives up to, to solve yeah, that problem. You are right there um, Angus so if uh, if a student does get automatically logged out the next time they join a lesson that counts as a, a second student joining that lesson effectively. Okay. So, right. Very good point um, the the longer you leave lessons running um, the more likely it is that you'll hit the 100 student limit. So I suppose oh. to, to, to that end, um, uh, shorter form lessons uh, are probably safest, if, particularly if you've got big uh, class sizes. May I ask a question, please? Sure, yeah. Is that Rose? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, currently, I'm using uh, Google Classroom uh, for Key Stage 3 students. And uh, we go for Google Meet uh, for a senior school student, which is Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5. 
I'd like to ask what is uh, the benefit of using uh, this system, the Google Classroom or uh, Google Meet? Is there any advantage that we don't have it in the previous ones? Okay, if I um, just to clarify the question there, Rose, are you asking what the advantage of Sparks Maths Virtual Classroom is over Google yes. Classroom? Yes. Google Meet. Okay, sure. So um, we'd actually see them as uh, very different um, kinds of systems. Um, so Google Classroom, um, it's a tool to help schools to, um, well, first of all, collaborate um, around teaching and learning uh, and to set assignments around teaching and learning. Sparks is very much about, um, specific to maths, first of all, it's about delivering um, maths uh, content to students. Um, and it's about uh, students being able to uh, access support around that content in the form of the tutorial videos that we provide. And it's about the teacher being able to monitor in real time students' progress through that content and to be able to identify where the students are struggling and therefore to be able to um, kind of offer intervention where it's required. And we do actually see some of our schools using um, all three of those products. So Google Classroom, Google Meet and Sparks Maths Virtual Classroom alongside one another. So just to bring that to life for you a little bit, how that might work. In Google Classroom, what you might have is um, uh, an assignment that you set to the class, which includes a lesson join link for Sparks Maths Virtual Classroom. So that assignment goes out to all of your students in Google Classroom. They mm -hmm. all receive that lesson join link. They complete their work in Sparks. They follow that link. They complete their work in Sparks. Um, but what you might want to do is deliver some wraparound teaching around that. So let's say you've placed two objectives into your virtual classroom lesson um, and you want to explain the uh, key learning points in those objectives to the class. You might decide to use Google Meet then to actually run a live teaching session before the students start working on their classwork in virtual classroom. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are there any follow on questions from that? And um, um, I'd like to ask for the assessment type, because um, to be honest, now we'll go for the end of the year exam with our students uh, by the beginning of June. And um, it seems we don't have that much of choices where we can control the, the you know, the honesty of the students uh, in doing the exams. Uh, is there any way tracking uh, the students while they are doing the exam using Sparks Math? Or... So, if I understand the question correctly, uh, it's, do, does Sparks provide any kind of assessment functionality? Yes. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, we don't at the moment. Um, uh, it's something we have looked into, but um, it's not something that we're going to be delivering in the, the short term. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, where we might head with this in the nearer term, um, we've been talking about Sparks Maths, the full Sparks Maths uh, earlier today. And something that we're looking into introducing uh, there is the ability for teachers to be able to set, not exams, but um, low stakes quizzes, um, whereby you could say, okay, I want to generate a quiz for my class. I don't want them to have any of the video support um, that's available in Sparks. Um, and I want them to get questions at this difficulty level around these objectives. And that would be a reasonable gauge then of um, kind of because the students don't have support in terms of the videos. It would be a reasonable gauge of where the students have uh, grasped the concepts behind those objectives. Mm -hmm. Now, what I would say there is given the remote context that we're working in here, um, it would be very difficult um, without... Um, well, without what, I don't know, but it would be very difficult to uh, control uh, the students' home environment. Um, so we can't stop yeah. them. We can't know if they're picking up the phone to a friend or they're using yeah. their, their phone to Google something and things like that. So absolutely a challenge that we understand and unfortunately not something we have an immediate solution to at the moment. Oh, thank you. No problem. Um, Angus, I'm just conscious, did we address all of your points? Did you have any follow-on questions from the conversation we were having earlier? Um, I've, I've not explored any kind of 
sequence planning on there. I don't know, because I've just got the sort of free version as well. I didn't know if I'd have access to that, but I didn't know if I could sort of stack lessons to to then sort of release. But it's, it's not the end of the world if I can't. I can just, yeah, it's really useful. So uh, let me say thanks again for letting me on. It's brilliant. It's great to get that feedback, as you've been saying there as well. You know, you can see that real-time feedback and you can see the questions that they're attempting, you know, word for word. So it's it's really handy. It plugs that gap brilliantly. Um, but yeah, um, if there's a sequence answer, then I could sort of get the lessons there and then not actually set them running. So the way I do it is I get them all sort of running. I think I'm using your technical terms. If I, get, I think I get them running and then I just release the actual link to the student when they're ready for it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and that is exactly how. You know. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah really. that's exactly how we'd recommend it. We used Angus, um, and to the um, is is it any different in in full Sparks Maths piece? Um, there is a different mechanism for planning lessons in Sparks Maths, but it's very similar to virtual classroom. Um, and at the moment, there isn't a concept of uh, kind of effectively you're describing um, uh, medium to or short to medium term planning there, I guess. Um, yeah. And at the moment, um, there's no mechanism for forward planning lessons but it is absolutely something that we're currently considering and would want to bring to the product in the future. Great, cheers. No worries. Um, we had another question in the chat. Um, we have a free trial at the moment, but we were alerted to Sparks via Hegarty Maths, which we already have full access to. How much does Sparks cost? And is there a deal for Hegarty Maths users? What extra functions are on the paid website? Um, Kerry, are you happy to take the first part of that question? And I can perhaps take the second part of the question. Sure, sure, no problem. Um, so you can imagine that we're getting asked this all the time at the minute. <laughs> so um, what we're actually doing for schools is we're giving them a, sort of a free trial of the full Sparks Maths so they can have a proper look at it and see if they're really are comfortable with it and they do like it um, and probably Boyd is going to have a little chat to you about a few of the differences and as far as pricing is concerned it's very much on a school by school basis of course we do have kind of standard pricing for Sparks Maths but we do tend to take it on a school by school basis and if you've already got Hegarty it's definitely a conversation we can be having with you so we probably do it away from this forum but we'll definitely have a chat with you about pricing if you're interested okay um, was there any further questions to the pricing part before i carry on um i was just after a, a rough amount really in terms of obviously uh we've already invested in Hegarty, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's a good platform but we've found that there is a, a sort of slight difference between Hegarty and sparks in terms of we might use Sparks a bit more at Key Stage 3 or, or things like that because I feel it's a bit more uh, suitable for Key Stage 3 students and Hegarty Maths is. Um, but obviously we've already invested a fair bit of money into Hegarty and we were wondering just in general what the sort of uh, price would be. Well, um, I, can't, I can't give you that answer, but yeah, like I say, it is a school by school. If you're happy for me, as soon as this is finished, I can get back to you with those ballpark figures and then... Yeah. You know, I know what school you're from, et cetera. So, because we, we kind of do it on cost per pupil and that kind of thing. So I'll um, I'll get straight back to you as soon as this is finished so that you've got an idea, okay? Brilliant, thank you. Super, thank you. And then in terms of the differences um, between uh, virtual classroom and uh, full Sparks Maths, as, as we call it. Um, so first of all, um, to the, the piece that we were talking a little while ago uh, about, uh, which was uh, students having persistent accounts. Um, this is, I'll, I'll get the, the dollar part out of the way first of all, the, the admin focused one, but basically with Sparks Maths, every student has an account. And so um, every time they're interactive with Sparks, we're building a profile about that student. Uh, and when they join a lesson, leave a lesson, come back into the lesson, we remember all of their progress, those kind of things. Um, all of that talks to your school's management information system. So basically we, take all of the relevant data from your school's MIS and we create accounts automatically for your students in Sparks Maths. From there then um, to the, the lesson planning side of things, um, you can follow a predefined curriculum uh, in um, Sparks Maths. Um, so using our content, you can either 
build your own scheme of learning or you can line, align our content to your scheme of learning. Or we also provide templates for a number of um, uh, kind of off the shelf schemes of learning, as it were. We have our own schemes of learning for uh, year seven, eight and GCSE. Um, and we offer those, uh, all of those at uh, foundation and higher level. Um, for GCSE, uh, we have scheme of learning templates for all of the major uh, GCSE exam boards. Um, and for those of you that are familiar, we also offer a template that's aligned to the white rose scheme of learning. So what that means is instead of, as you'll be used to in virtual classroom, having to search for all of the topics that you want to um, pick objectives from, you basically have, um, in fact, let me show this to you. It's probably easier to uh, show you this in the actual product. And you'll notice that it's um, very similar to what you're used to in virtual classroom. So it's not as though it would be a, a, a huge leap to learn how to use Sparks Maths. Um, but if I go into the lesson section here for a full Sparks Math school, you'll see that um, here, oh, if I go into lesson planning, um, we'll pick a year seven class. You'll see here, instead of just having a topic search, we've got a predefined scheme of learning on the left hand side here. And this is actually our year seven higher scheme of learning. But as I say, there's a whole bunch of different templates you can follow. Uh, and what we'll do there is um, suggest uh, which topics should be covered in which weeks. Uh, and we will automatically zone in on the content that we feel is most relevant to the level that the class is working at. So here we know this is a higher level year seven class. So we'll automatically start zoning in on the higher level um, objectives around this topic. And as you can see, the whole scheme of learning is divided by terms and weeks. And we would ordinarily be placing the teacher at exactly the place in the scheme of learning that's relevant to today's date. So um, a lot more of the kind of the pre-planning uh, of lessons is, is done for you in full Sparks Maths. Also, um, you'll notice there's uh, three additional options on the menu here, Planner, Hand In and Insights. And all of this relates to um, the homework functionality that you get in full Sparks Maths. Um, so um, with Full Sparks Maths, we generate an hour's bespoke homework for every student every week. And that homework aligns with uh, what you've taught in your lessons. So um, whatever objectives you've taught in the preceding week, um, we'll automatically place those into uh, a homework plan for the class. Um, so I'm just going to pick a year nine class because um, got a better example of a homework planner here. So what would have happened is you would have taught these topics in lessons. We will have automatically placed them into the homework plan for the class. You can still take these topics out if you don't want that to go into homework. So you've got full control over what goes into homework. But then when homework uh, or when, when the handout day rolls around, what we're going to do is automatically generate an hour's homework for every student in the class with uh, a predominant amount of that homework focused around these topics. But also, and this is where the bespoke part comes in, um, we're going to give students consolidation and revision work as well. Um, so we understand whether a student has learned a topic or not. And if they haven't, in future homeworks, we're going to keep periodically asking them questions um, uh, around those topics until we're satisfied that they have learned them. And when I mention an hour's homework for every student, the way we work that out is we learn the pace at which students work and we learn their level of ability. So we're able to give them questions that stretch them enough, but not so much that they'll become demotivated. Um, and we give them a number of questions that aligns with the pace at which they work. So you can see through those mechanisms, every student in the class is going to get um, a, a suitable level of challenge in their homework around the things that you've been teaching um, plus anything that we don't think they fully grasped from previous weeks. So uh, in a nutshell, those are the main differences between virtual classroom and full Sparks Maths. Any questions, follow on questions about that there? No, that, that sounds um, really good and really promising. Um, just one, well, sorry, one question really. Obviously, I've seen how the, the lessons work just in our free trial on virtual classroom. In terms of Obviously, that's with each student being at a computer, being able to answer those questions. 
is there an ability to print in the full Sparks Maths in terms of get the questions as a workbook for them to go through? Because obviously, we don't have the sort of facilities for them to be on a computer all the time. Sure. Um, so the simple answer is that um, Sparks Maths is a digital solution. Uh, and so students would require access to uh, a device in order to, to work through the questions. Um, we don't provide them in a, in a, in a non-digital format or a printable format. What I would say, however, though, is um, I can imagine for, for many schools, uh, the prospect of uh, having one-to-one -one device provision in the classroom um, may not be practical. We understand that. Uh, and to that end, it is possible just to take the homework part. So if you don't think you'd be able to deliver the lessons part in the classroom, you can just have the homework part of Sparks Maths and then students work on their own devices at home. What I would say to the, the, the lessons part, though, is um, just to share some models that um, some of the schools that we currently work with use. Um, some of them may start just a cohort at a time and they introduce no new cohorts each year. So there's not, um, uh, you know, an a huge upfront investment in terms of having to buy five cohorts worth of uh, devices. So that's a, a potential option. Also, um, I know it can be less practical, but in terms of timetabling, um, if your schools uh, kind of uh, split into to houses or whatnot, timetabling can be made such that um, concurrent lessons are, are, are minimized, such that device provision can be minimized. And also we do work with um, a number of uh, device partners as well who can offer all sorts of options through kind of leasing and purchasing devices and whatnot. So there's definitely options. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Cool, no problem at all. Um, so then we had another question from uh, Nora. How can I apply to try the Full Sparks platform? Does it run outside of the UK as I could not sign up Hegarty as it's not running outside of the UK? OK, so to the first point, um, I'm sure Kerry can be in touch after the call. Is that right, Kerry? Yeah, most certainly. I'll drop you an email and uh, let you know how you can sign up for that. And it's not a problem to do schools outside of the UK at all, is it? Nope. No, no, not at all. Um, so uh, the, the content is the same as you would be seeing in a virtual classroom. Um, however, we are going to be, uh, by September, adding support for uh, IGCSE, International GCSE as well. Um, but the, the content will still be in English. But, but fine to use it outside of the UK, as Kerry says. Okay, um, did anybody else have any other questions? There's nothing more in the chat at the moment. Um, I'm just going to see if anybody has been able to submit anything via the other questions mechanism. No, nothing there. Um, I think just uh, very quickly then, it's probably worth um, just sharing a couple more um, kind of uh, quick tips um, that relate to questions that we've had from virtual classroom customers recently. Um, so the first one would be um, when you are, um, so I just head over to virtual classroom, to log back into that. When you are searching for your topics, um, we've had some feedback that suggests that while Sparks might have uh, relevant objectives uh, around um, a topic, uh, it's not always clear what topic you need to search for because the name that we give to a topic may not necessarily intuitively align with how you would think about that topic. Um, so it's probably worth knowing if you're um, not already aware that on the virtual classroom support site, which is learning.sparks.co.uk slash VC support. If you head down to the FAQ section here um, and you will see that there is a question which says, what topic coverage does virtual classroom provide? Um, in there, there's a link to a PDF. Uh, and in fact, what I'm gonna do, if anyone does want to copy and paste that, is just put, the URL to that PDF directly in the chat for the, the webinar here. Um, and that PDF um, basically gives you a, a full listing of all of the topics that we provide content for. So you can um, use this as a reference 
and then search for the topic name in, in virtual classroom. So for example, if I take using probability phases there and search for that, you can see there that returns the two topics at key stage three and GCSE. Um, is that online and offline? Uh, it's a question Angus uh, answered. So with the um, offline um, topics, Angus, um, if they are fully offline, i.e. if we don't um, offer any, uh, uh, kind of digital content around a topic, it won't be returned in um, the, the topic search results uh, because there is nothing that you'd be able to deliver. Um, it's worth mentioning there that um, our content science team are currently uh, in the process of uh, developing a lot of new content around offline topics. So even the picture we're seeing here in this PDF is rapidly changing. And some of the topics that you currently see as offline in the PDF uh, will become online or part online um, at some point in the near future. Again, the, the timeline for that is by um, September. Um, uh, but also, um, we, uh, we, we're we adding um, new uh, objectives to uh, part offline topics as well. So just because it's listed as an offline topic in this document doesn't necessarily mean in the coming weeks that we won't find any content. But don't be surprised if there isn't, is, is the simple answer to that. OK, um, any follow on questions to finding topics no okay and i'll just check whether there was anything else that was worth sharing so we've talked about students across multiple sessions yeah another one that's probably worth mentioning is just very quickly um to talk about um kind of common patterns that you might spot when you're monitoring your virtual classroom lessons and how to spot whether a student's struggling. Um, so if you're fairly new to virtual classroom or you're less familiar with the lesson monitoring view, I'll just give you a very quick uh, run through of, of the kind of things that you're likely to see there. Um, I don't have a, a live lesson in my virtual classroom school there. So I am going to show you this uh, through the context of full sparks maths. But essentially, in the lesson monitoring view, what you see is largely the same. Um, so let's just very quickly to log back in again, pop over to my lesson I've got running here, and just very quickly call out a couple of common patterns that you might see. So hopefully, it's already fairly intuitive that uh, when students are making less progress, you're going to see them with fewer squares that are filled in. And if, they're, if their squares are green, that means they've got that question correct. If the square's red, it means they've got it incorrect. A couple of things to watch for beyond that, though. Um, here you can see an example of a, a student that's answered a question incorrectly three times, and they've still not got that question correct. Now, because you don't see the blue video tick there, that's a suggestion that that student hasn't yet watched the support video. And it could well be the case that if they watch that, they might be able to unstick themselves. So what you might want to do with that student there is ping them an email or contact them on Google Classroom or whatever your school's um, uh, communication mechanism is and suggest that maybe they might want to watch the video for that question. Um, another common pattern here is um, you can see that there's lots of red squares in the first column here. And if you haven't already deduced, um, basically each column is uh, um, a single skill. So for each of the squares in that column, all of the students are going to get a variant on the same question relating to the same skill. So you can infer that if there are multiple students that are struggling in a column, that there might be a, a concept here that the class um, as a whole or a majority of the class are struggling with. And therefore, you might want to issue some additional teaching uh, around that piece to, to help to unstick the class or, or resolve whatever um, struggle or misconception um, that they've got. So those are probably the, the key things to point out. So I'm just going to check whether any final questions have come in whilst we were running through that. It doesn't look like it. Um, oh, and I yeah. uh, whilst you're on there, it just reminded me, um, it's Angus again. Um, <laughs> Is there any way that you can see the question they're working on before they've submitted? I've been saying to them, say, looking at that top um, 
that top student there who's had a look at the video and had two attempts at the first question, if they currently have an attempt, a third question, so I can't actually see their numbers because, as you say, it's a variant of the same skill. Is there any way that I can see their question that they're working on rather than the two they've got wrong? So, unfortunately, at the moment, it's, it isn't. Um, the the okay. best that we can recommend at the moment, and I appreciate this is far from perfect, is, uh, so let's say, for example, um, student two here is struggling on the third question. What you could do there is look at student three because they have had a question and right. you can look at the variant of the question they were presented with. Now that's not necessarily going to give you exactly the same numbers as the a student right. two would have, but it gives you a flavor for the question that they're being asked. Alternatively, oh, yeah. um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're happy to dip out of the lesson, what you can also do, if we go back to um, the running lesson screen, here you can see which objectives are in that lesson and you can also preview the questions from there. So let's say it were yeah. the third question in the core that they were struggling with, go to item C and there is an example of that question. So great. Not I've been I've been logging me on as well as though I'm a student and then I've got access to them that way. But it, it, it just seemed a bit clunky. I didn't know if there was an easier way, but um, it's fine, it, it works so no and it's 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 really valid and appreciated feedback angus and it's it's something that um we've heard before and and we we we've experienced ourselves and to that end um it is something we we've even got designs for how the solution will look to uh, to this one um we just haven't moved that forward yet so i would say um being tentative across the, the coming academic year we we will have a a, a nicer experience around that in place Okay, oh, cheers. <laughs> and were there any final questions? I'll put out one final call for questions before we bring the session to a close. Nothing in the chat there, and don't think anyone's put anything in the other one. No, okay. Okay. Um, then I think, uh, Kerry, did you have anything to, to add before we draw to a close? Nothing, but just to say that I'll certainly get straight back to Nora and to Mr. Pugh, because I dare say your first name in case I pronounce it incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I know which schools you're from, so I'll get them sent out to you and some information so you've got it. OK, and thank you very much. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and also from me, uh, thank you all for your time this afternoon. It's very much appreciated. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if, if any other questions crop up uh, after the session or you have any struggles using Virtual Classroom, then uh, just drop us an email through any existing contacts you might be talking to. Or if you're not talking to anyone at the moment, just email virtual at sparks.co.uk and someone will get back to you. Um, Nora, would you be happy to stay on the session with me just so we can talk about your um, potentially missing student data there? Uh, okay, yes. Perfect. To everyone else, uh, have a great, if you're in the UK, a great rest of your afternoon. If you're elsewhere, a great rest of your day or evening or wherever you are. Take care, everyone.